Suddenly, your world changes. You're in a place you never imagined. You don't feel like yourself anymore. You feel alone, but you're not. Other people with spinal cord injuries know exactly what you're going through because they've been there themselves. They're the voices of experience, and they can help you get through this. They know how it feels, and they're not hiding it. We asked them how they dealt with their anger. Here's what they had to say. Anger, anger, anger. I get that question a lot now. Like, where did you put all that anger? I was angry, like severely angry. Um, so I would flip from angry to depressed a lot. So the uh, only person that I just was around was my mom, because that's who was help taking care of me. Uh, but she couldn't even be around me. That's just how angry I was. Uh, she would cook that morning and she would just get away and get out the house and just let me be. In the beginning, I, I vented because I hated who I was. I asked the Lord, why me, why? There's so many bad people in this world. It's like, why did this happen to me? I was always just very angry that, you know, people were doing things wrong or doing, like I was upset at doctors for not having any answers or like spinal cord injury. I really didn't know anything about a spinal cord injury before all of this happened. And who knew that, well, I didn't know that there was no cure for a spinal cord injury. And I, you know, I learned all this along the way and it was, very disheartening, you know, very angry <laughs> at, at Western medicine in general. I was angry. I was very angry. The woman was 30. It, you're an adult, you know, it was barely 8 o'clock at night. I saw a picture of her on Facebook, smiling, recently happy, and it's like, no, like, that's not fair. Like, I'm dealing with all this and you're now happy and doing fine. You know, it's, that's a hard thing to deal with. I mean, there were days that I would just literally come home and just scream out loud like you'd want to pull your hair out, scream, just because I did not want to be in this situation. I wanted to walk so very badly. I'm frustrated when I'm dropping things, when I'm scraping things, you know, when I fall. Of course, I'm mad at that. The fact that, you know, my clothes don't fit the way they do. I mean, there's a lot of frustration, anger, along with all of that. But I think for me, I didn't want to show that in front of my kids. So a lot of anger and frustration with myself um, happened in solitude of my bed at night when no one was watching. And the nights were very, very long, you know, and I used to say things like, why is the sun coming up when I'm not ready to have another day? I get angry uh, when I'm reminded that I have a disability. Uh, that, that makes me angry. Uh, the reminders are when I can't go to just any place in the city, that there's limits, there's bar physical architectural barriers. The other barrier is when uh, my disability kicks in, when I have uh, accidents, we call them accidents. And that's a code among us, so if I had an accident, we don't need details, go home, shower, come back, take care of your stuff, and we know what happened. I need more control. I need more control on certain things. That's what angers me. I could be angry at my ex-wife for, for us not being able to find a way. I could be angry at those friends that fell off the map because they didn't have a, a place for this to fit in their hearts. I could be angry for my, at my father for teaching me anger. <laughs> you don't wake up one day and say, anger is no good, and you turn the anger switch off. Anger is something at that point in my life was something that just came to me in the moment. The, the conflict was there and the anger was there with it. There was one night where I was ready to get in the shower. I had my clothes off. I was parked by the shower. I was ready. And I said, hollered for mom. And she was like, I can't help you right now. And I, this is probably also when I learned that anger is a good motivator for me. Um, I was like, well, fine then and then I just did it because I wanted to do it and I was motivated and um, of course that pimps you in the end because then they know you can do it so you have to keep doing it for yourself. There's anger at finding yourself in a position that used to be so easy to not be able to do that again 
from the simple things of you know pulling things off a shelf or changing a light bulb or opening a window you know i kind of took care of the house and did things and hammered things and hung pictures i can't hang pictures now and so there's a lot of things that you take for granted that you do every day that suddenly from a wheelchair you can't take for granted anymore i have two daughters a wife i am the man of the house the dog is female and I used to do everything. And now suddenly to not be able to do that, it really, you just feel impotent. You feel like you're not a man because you can't do the things that you used to do. And now you have to rely on everybody else to do those things. Now, when I call someone to come hang a picture or when I call someone to do my yard or to plant plants or to do things that I used to do, I tell myself, I'm still in charge. I'm still doing this, although I'm now calling other people to do that, so my wife still doesn't worry about it. I don't get angry like I used to as frequently as I did as a youngster. Maybe that's just age. But I think it, it, the injury frames the opportunities for anger and puts them in perspective. Some things that used to would have made me angry are not that big a deal. You learn to value what's really important, what should really push your anger button, and that the, the number of those shrinks over time. I've learned to count, and count works in, count, counting works for me. may not work for everybody, but I just take a moment. I'm like, well, she said I was snippy, so I took the next, I, I skipped the next phone call, I went outside, I was listening to the birds and the trees, and just took a moment to myself, like, whoa. I just take a moment. Sometimes you need a moment. This may sound uh, strange to some people, but you know, when you get this injury, there's not a lot of people who like hang, you know, would like hanging out or around you to begin with. And then if you throw on top of it the fact that you're angry all the time or not pleasant to be around, Nobody likes a angry or, or disgruntled disabled priest person. It's not going to help. It's not going to help your situation. Sometimes you can't sweat the small shit. You just have to go with it. So I try to overlook a lot of things and get up and enjoy my day. I don't want to say I'm completely over it, but I was bitter and mad. I went to see a psychologist here at Shepherd, and then I went to see a psychiatrist sometimes, and you can say the same thing to your caregiver, but it's a different effect when you say it to somebody who's, you know, who you don't see every day, and you go to their office, and just a change of scene sometimes helps to get that frustration out. I was really angry for a long time, um, and I just kind of had a, I just kind of realized one day, like, Nobody wants to hear it. I was lucky enough to have a great set of people around me, and I realized pretty early on that life goes on, right? The sun goes up, sun goes down. You can choose to participate in life, or you can choose to sit. And I was like, you know, I really have a lot of people that I like, and I really want to be around those people, and I want them to want to be around me. Now I look around, and I'm like, geez, there's so many knuckleheads out there that never wake up. I mean, all I've got that's wrong with me is I can't walk around, so what, right? So it's kind of how I dealt with it. I think the spinal cord injury really um, was something that allowed me to feel that I didn't have to feel angry anymore because everyone expects something brand new after a catastrophic injury. Pete's gonna come back from this as a different person. And so it started with gratitude Every time the light was green at an intersection when I got to it, I expressed gratitude to the universe. Thank you for the green light. When somebody had let me pull out in front of them in traffic, out loud, gratitude, thank you for letting me out. And every chance I had to express gratitude, I did it out loud so I could hear it every day so that I knew every day there were things to be pleased about. And the more I focused on that, the less the agitating things of my life could percolate up, to the, percolate up to the surface. You have to allow yourself to accept that accidents happen, tragedy happens, um, 
and then get past it. What happens to you is not really as important as how you deal with it. Voices of experience. They know. They've lived it. To watch and download the 10-part series, go to facingdisability.com forward slash voices of experience videos.